Hi, and welcome to another craft video from the Kansas City, Kansas Public Library. I'm Cheryl, and I'm in charge of the craft kits at the main library. And today's video is to accompany a craft kit that we'll be giving out at the main library starting August 15th, 2022. But if you don't make it to the library in time to get a kit, don't worry, you can do this same project with supplies you'll find at any craft store. And I'm sorry about my voice today. I'm getting over a cold, so my voice hasn't quite gotten back to normal yet. So, this is what we're going to be doing today. This cute little, um, it's a little zippered pouch. And we're going to use a doily to stencil paint onto this. And I'll show you what's in the kit and what you need to make it at home if you don't have the kit right now. Okay, in the kit, you'll get this zippered canvas pouch. Now, when you get the canvas pouch, you're going to have to decide, are you going to be um, washing this pouch. If you're going to be washing it later, then I would suggest you wash it, run it through the washing machine first, and then iron it flat. If you're going to be using this little pouch for something that is not going to need washing, then you don't have to wash it. Um, but if your pouch is a little bit wrinkled, because these are fabric, they can be wrinkled, I would suggest maybe running an iron over it to get it nice and flat but that's not absolutely necessary okay you will also in your kit get a regular paper doily and this is just a normal one that you can buy at the um, at the grocery store any place they sell party supplies it's just a little paper doily you'll get two containers of paint um, this is fabric paint here. This is brush-on fabric paint that you can buy at any craft store. You'll get a foam brush and I do, if you're doing this at home, I do recommend a foam brush. You do not want to use a regular brush because you're going to be um, applying the paint like this, just kind of pouncing it. You don't want to brush it. We're also going to be including a couple of um, latex or not latex non latex gloves um, in case you are worried about getting your your hands dirty it's not a big deal I like to wear one uh, on my right hand because I tend to like to push the foam like this with my finger in which case I need a glove but that's not absolutely necessary you will also get a little package of pre-cut ribbons um, and these will be used to to decorate to tie onto the little slide okay let's get started now <clears throat> I'm going to be doing the back of this one so I am going to I don't want to use green because I used orange on the front so I'm going to be using um, the orange here Now, I like to do um, the light colors first, but that's just a personal preference. So I'm going to get something to put my paint on. Now, you can just use the paint directly from the container if you've got a big enough container. Uh, some of the containers are a little small, so you might want to put it on a little plastic plate or a piece of paper or something um, that you can use later or that you can throw away later excuse me so I'm gonna use the bottom of this plastic um, bowl here okay now you will notice some orange paint on my hands because as I was putting the orange paint on here I spilled a little be very careful with this 
if you get it on your clothes this is fabric paint so it's meant to be permanent on your clothes if you get it on your clothes wash it off immediately so that it doesn't dry and stay and stain all right so now i'm going to decide where i want this my my design to be so i'm going to just start off like over here now i'm going to get a little bit of paint on my brush you don't want too much paint on your brush because when you're doing stenciling if you put too much paint on your brush it might leak out under the stencil so start off with a little bit and then you can get a little bit more if that's not enough okay so I'm gonna hold this down in the middle and I'm going to start just kind of dabbing it and you want to go off the edge too so that it forms a little halo around your doily and I tend to like to push it down like this to make sure I get good contact and you can see in there whether or not you're getting good contact in between the little holes Alrighty. and I'm just gonna keep doing this all the way around and you don't want a lot of paint just enough to color it in Now when you get up close to the edge, um, the edge is a little bit raised because there's a seam and it's doubled fabric under there. So you have to be careful about not letting the fabric, or I'm sorry, not letting the doily shift too much. Because it's gonna wanna wrinkle up. Okay, once you've got that all done just gently lift it up and you'll see the design behind it now before you reuse the doily check the back and make sure that you don't have too much paint on the back because if, if I try and put this down somewhere else and do another set and it's got paint all over the back then I'm just gonna make a big mess so if you've got too much paint on the back, you can set it aside in paper towel and dab some of it off and wait till it dries to reuse it. And that's also what you want to do when you're switching colors, too. Because you will get two colors in your, um, in your kit. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of a smaller one up here, just on this corner. All right, so now I'm going to go wash the orange out of my brush. And I'm going to let my doily dry in between the colors so that I don't get when I do, so that when I do the black, it's not going to get smeared in with orange. Okay. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to go do that. All right, I've gone and washed as much of the orange paint out of the brush as I could, and I've very uh, thoroughly squeezed it dry to get all the water out also. Um, you do not want the brush to be too wet in between colors because if it's too wet your next color is going to be too thin when it'll water down the paint and it'll cause the 
the paint to spread out under the doilies. Okay. And this, I'm going to make sure I don't have any paint. I'm just going to tap it with a um, paper towel so that I make sure that the back has no orange on it. And now I'm going to... And I've let this dry for a, a couple of minutes so that it's mostly dry and so that I won't smear. But if be careful when you set it down. Don't try and move it because if you have any little pockets that are still a little bit wet of the orange, you're going to be smearing them. So be very careful about setting it down. Don't twist it. And also, if, if you're worried about it, let this dry completely for about 10-15 minutes in between colors and that will help also. And I'm going to overlap both of these like that. Now I'm going to do the black exactly the same way I did the orange. Okay, let's lift that up. There we go. And I think I'm going to stop right there. Now you probably have more paint than you need in your kit. So if you're going to keep it, seal it up nice and tight and it should keep well. Or you can just keep going and do more. Okay, I'm going to clean off my hands and my brush and take off my glove and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so that's, the paint is done. And now what I would recommend is that you, you let it dry for a while before you put the, um, the ribbon on. And what I do to decorate this is, you might have more ribbon than you need, but figure out how much you want. Make sure it's all nice and the ends are all even. Then what you'll do is fold it in half and pinch the little loop and put it through the hole on your zipper. Now this is where if you've got some bigger ribbons you might have you might use less. Um, if you've got smaller ribbon you might use all of them that are in your kit. I mean, it just and if you're buying this at home just just buy some little cord or something that goes with the colors and put it in so you've got a loop on one side and then the ends on there and then just feed the ends through the loop pull the ends until it tightens up and there you've got it decorated and if your ribbon's too long go ahead and at this point trim it off to however you want it however long or short you want it now this is done. If you want to do, if you have enough paint, you can then, after it's dried, go flip it over and do the other side like I've done. If you want to decorate it further, you can get embellishment glue. They sell special glues at the craft store where you can um, embellish it. You can, so, you can uh, glue on like little rhinestones or pearls, or um, if you have some extra other trim that you might want on, you can actually glue on with some fabric glue, trim around, well this one is not doesn't work right with this, but um, you can glue on trim around here, you can glue rhinestones along the centers of your little doily parts, um, as long as you use the fabric the fabric glue or embellishment glue and let it set. Now, when you are done, when you are done with this, the instructions on this says um, dry flat for at least four hours. Um, if you're going to wash it, wait at least 72 hours after you've done the paint. 
um, before you wash it and turn it inside out so that um, the abrasion is not on here. Now, depending on what you're going to use this for, you don't need to wash this. But as I said at the beginning, if you're going to use it for something that you're going to wash it later, wait at least 72 hours and wash it before you do the paint. Paint it, then wait 72 hours before you wash it again. Okay, And wash it on gentle and cool. Preferably Preferably hand wash it if you if you can, but if not, gentle cycle and cool water. One other thing I wanted to tell you about is if you're going to be using the extra paint on something that's not canvas, if it's thin, thin thinner material, it might soak through. It's not going to soak through to the other side on the canvas products. But if it's a thinner material and you're going to use the rest of this paint, um, put cardboard in between, like if you're going to use this on a t-shirt, put cardboard in between the layers of the t-shirt so that it doesn't soak through what you're painting and come out the back, just to make sure. But on canvas, you don't have to worry about that. That's it for another craft video from the Kansas City, Kansas Public Library. Thanks for viewing another video, and we'll see you next time. Bye!